a lot of my friends have been coming at me with this argument. You know, we have a sometimes argument, omnivore versus carnivore or whatever. And they say to me, oh, but we've grown so much in size in the last 50 years. I think 50 years ago, we we're a couple inches shorter on average or something, or something like that compared to where, where we are today. Um, I was kind of stumped at this. What, what are your thoughts on that, uh, Dr. Chafee? Yeah. So, I mean, I think when you think about omnivores versus carnivores, um, you have to sort of depends on your definition of terms, right? So like, you know, just saying omnivores because we can eat other things, we can eat plants and we can eat on animals. Does that mean that we're omnivores? Well, we, we show that you can get, you can eat dirt and, uh, you know, get nutrition from that. We're not dirtivores and uh, you can drink Coca-Cola and get vital necessary life, life preserving calories from Coke, you know, and you, but you can't just eat Coke, eat dirt and drink Coke, eat dirt and take a multivitamin. That's like, that's food. Then we're just perfectly fine. Uh, no, that's, that's insane. So, uh, just because we can do something doesn't mean that we should do something. Doesn't mean that we, uh, will benefit, um, over other things. Right. So I think that, that we actually are carnivores. I think we actually are obligate carnivores because we have to have meat there. There are nutrients found in meat that we have to have that we cannot get from plants, but there is nothing in plants that we have to have that we cannot get from meat. So I think that that means that we're obligate carnivores. We are obligated to eat meat. We have to eat meat. We don't need to eat plants. We're, you know, we have, we come from an herbivorous past more recently than carno than canines and felines. And so we have a bit more defenses against defense chemicals. Most plants will just kill off any, any cat or any feline. Right. And yet we still give them, you know, grain and plant-based uh, kibble, right? Yeah. Because it's cheap and it's filler, right? Yeah. And they can survive, but that doesn't mean that they're thriving. That doesn't mean that they're going to be as healthy as they possibly could be, right? So does that and and felines are are you know classified as obligate carnivores, right? And you know and yet they can survive on the on this kibble, right? So does that make them omnivores? I don't think so. So I think the same applies to us. Now, while we can eat more plants with less harm than felines can. That doesn't mean that that's going to be good for us or optimal. And I don't think that that means that we're omnivores. Um, as to uh, the height thing, well, there's a lot of different things that come into play with height. So, you know, we're, we're, we're taller now than we were then. Okay. Well, we're eating a lot more processed food and sugars. I mean, processed food and sugar is better for us. <laughs> Probably not, you know, um, you know, the average height of a population is generally the average health of a population, but it can also have to do with access as much as, um, as quality of the food that they that people are eating, you know, during the 20th century, we had massive famines and tens of millions of people that died, uh, in, in the different communist, um, regimes through, uh, start, you know, forced starvations and things like that, like, you know, Mao Zedong and, you know, the, uh, Holodomor, uh, famine in uh, the Ukraine that killed 6 million people. People were turning into cannibalism, uh, at that time, they were killing and eating their own children. It was crazy. There's actually posters going up because it was so widespread that there's posters up in, in towns that said it is barbaric to eat your children. You can Google that. You can find that out. There are actual. You can actually find the images of these horrific uh, events um, still on Google. And if you want nightmares for the rest of your life, you can do that. Um, I, I still have these images burned into my head that I because I was dumb enough to do it myself. Uh, it's absolutely terrifying. So that's the thing too, you know, and you have, um, you have, uh, throughout history, generally food is very, was harder to come by than it is. Now we have an abundance of food. Now, you know, it was really like Richard Nixon in America said, Hey, we need to do something. We need to make food readily available and really cheap. We need an abundance and overabundance of food. So they really started ramping up, uh, ways of, of making that happen. And so now we have, you know, I don't think anyone would, would, um, would argue that certainly in Western countries, we have an overabundance of, uh, food, right. And probably a paucity of nutrition. We're not getting, it's not very nutritious food. It's just, you know, calorically dense. Um, but you know, of course, when you have more people that are overfed versus underfed, you're, you're going to, you're going to grow taller, you know, because you're not, you're not starving and shrinking them. Um, you know, the, you look at the impoverished class, the bottom, the lowest 20 percentile, uh, economic percentile in America, they're on average heavier and more overweight than, than the rest of the, uh, of the population. 
you know, I guess, I guess because they're, they're, they're just so hungry, you know, and, uh, because they can't afford to eat. Right. So even, even the lowest, uh, economic, uh, quintile is, is, has an abundance an overabundance of nutrition now. So obviously that's going to play a role, a major role in, in average height. Uh, whereas 50 years ago, hundred years ago, 200 years ago, the problem was not getting enough food as opposed to, um, you know, eating garbage processed slop that we do now. Mm. And also looking back in history, uh, uh, like looking really far back, you can see a lot of the fossil records of humans being a lot taller. Do you have any more insights than that? Yeah, well, that, that, that's exactly right. So when you look at you look at these these primitive uh, populations, uh, like especially like the, the big mammoth hunters uh, back in the ice ages, they were very very tall. So depending on the on the um, on the area and the and the time, they could be on average, you know, anywhere from like five foot ten to six foot two. Some as much as six foot four on average. Okay, so that's on average adult male height. Okay, so these are, these are very tall individuals. Obviously, there's there's variations between individuals, but the average was well over six feet, and the average uh, adult male height in America now, whether it's it's taller now than it was 50 years ago, I, I'm not I you know, I, haven't, I haven't looked at that statistic, but right now it's five foot eight, right? That's tiny, you know that <laughs> you know, and so and you know in China it's like it's like five foot six or so. And so, you know, that, that's the average for adult male height. Like that's, that's quite a lot shorter than what we're seeing in the fossil record from, from people, you know, even, even the native Amer- Americans much taller than that, you know, there was, um, there's different, um, you know, paintings, depictions, and, you know, recorded events of, uh, you know, Jefferson meeting different native Americans. These guys were all pushing seven feet tall and there's paintings of these guys they are like, oh, wow, look at these guys. They have such small heads. You know, and then we're like, well, no, that's because that guy's seven foot tall. Mm-hmm. He actually has a big head. It's just his body's even bigger. And um, and so uh, Steve Finney actually did talk about that, um, and he and he showed the pictures of that uh, that guy. So if, uh, if if you guys want to look in that into that, so people were were, were much much taller, um, and um, and generally that was because they were healthier and they were eating healthier food, but you also have to have enough food, right? So if you're eating mammoths and you're hunting mammoths and you're scaring, you know, a, a, a herd of mammoth over a cliff and they crash and burn at the bottom, uh, you have food for the next 10 years, you know, it's just, you've got an overabundance. So a lot of these guys actually had a, a, a great abundance of really, really good high quality nutrition. They would do the Buffalo drops in North America as well. Uh, when the Buffalo would come through, uh, the different tribes in that area would scare off a number of them over a cliff. They'd fall and die, and they would be able to to process them and and dry them and make pemmican, and they would eat that throughout the year. And so that one big hunt allowed the whole whole tribe to eat for the year, and uh, and then they would do it again the next year, and they would hunt in between and all that sort of stuff. But generally, they just had an abundance of food, um, and so these guys were going to be taller. So in those areas that had you know, a surplus of food and good nutrition, they were actually much, much taller than, than we see now. Now we have the abundance of, of uh, food and access to calories, but it's just not that great quality. And so we're not, we're not uh, seeing the benefits of that. And we're not seeing that, that um, average height being what it could be. Yeah. yeah. Um, I had a bit of an insight with that actually. So you said that the average height in China is around five foot six. Um, and if you if you actually look at the um the a graph that shows the highest animal consumption, Hong Kong has the highest meat consumption in the world and like the highest life expectancy. So wouldn't they would you not think they'd be a little bit taller? I know China isn't just Hong Kong, but yeah, no, I, I definitely would think that. And uh, and that's something that would be that would be good to look into. Um, you know, if you look at if you look at the I mean, just look at the, the people that come immigrate from you know China to America or or uh, other Western countries uh, like Australia. Um, quite often, you have these little wizened, tiny parents uh, who lived through these these famines and depressions, and uh, and they're they're stunted. Their growth is stunted, and then they they come over to the West, and uh, their kids are like six foot four, 
you know, because they have, you know, they have all this uh, access to, to food and nutrition. Uh, I went to school with several of these guys and uh, where their parents were, I mean, tiny, just tiny, tiny little people. And, and they were monsters. It was just like, you know, you adopted or something like what's going on. Um, but you know, that, that, that's where that comes from. Uh, and then if you look back at like the Qin dynasty uh, that made China, that sort of, you know, conglomerated all the different sort of warring factions and tribes uh, and entities. Um, I was reading somewhere that they, that their soldiers were on average, like six foot two, six foot three. Right. So again, this is this, these, these, these big bastards. And this was before the, the, the um, institution of like widespread, like, you know, rice cultivation and things like that. Uh, and then you sort of see the average height start, start to creep down. But yeah, you should, you, you would expect to see that. And that's not something I've looked up though. That'd be interesting to, to look up uh, what the average height in Hong Kong is. Yeah. 